Right. Try and fix a camera. There we go. I think something like that. So what I've got, I've got my little girl here upside down, so I can see her more completely. Instead of focusing on any one item, putting her upside down makes her an abstract for me, so that I can focus on the entire painting instead of one thing. Her face isn't what I want it to be. So I, but instead of focusing on that and obsessing on that and leaving the rest of the painting <laughs> to go to hell, um, I'm, I've turned her upside down. Uh, I've, what I've managed to do is fill in a couple of the spots to be a little bit darker. The fireplace is going to, is growing blacker and blacker and blacker. And I have, I probably will leave it like that. I like, sometimes I like extreme blacks, sometimes not. But I want the, I want her skirt to pop up. Now here's my dilemma. Her skirt in the reference photo is a, you know, it's a cotton skirt. But do I want to go and fill this whole thing in or not? Or do I want to leave the canvas somewhat exposed, which I happen to think is a little bit more interesting, but may not be appropriate. Now the nice thing is, I don't really have to decide right this second. It would be nice if I could decide right this second. It would be terrific, but I don't really have to. It's quite all right. Because what I really want to do in the end is have the skirt feeling like um, a cotton skirt with, with folds in it. And I'm afraid that if I obsess on getting this pink or white or, you know, getting, laying down paint just to lay down paint, is I'm going to lose that magic of that magic spot where things aren't quite finished and I can change it into anything I want it to be. I can take it into any direction. So, because I, I really want to leave myself the option later, I think I'm going to leave it a little blank right now. I may all, I'm going to keep doing this, so adding a few more folds here and there. And they're not exactly what's in the photograph. This is reference material. The still life that we work on, it's just reference material. The, the nude that we work on, oh, it's, it's reference material. It's all reference material. You do not need to be exact. This isn't a quiz. You're not going to fail. Blah, blah, blah. People don't know. They're not going to know the difference. So there's no reason to bleed your brain over getting it exactly right. There's no reason to make yourself crazy over a cotton skirt right at this second. It's no, it's no reason to make you so crazy over each little fold in the cotton skirt, but just because it's in the photograph. If you know how a cotton skirt feels, how cotton feels. Gentlemen, if you've never worn a cotton skirt before, you've worn a cotton shirt, um, you know how that feels. You know how it folds. So it's not necessary to guide that line. It, it's not necessary. You don't have to go to drama streams over it. None of the great artists did. They let it go. Be a great artist. Let it go. Um, but what I am going to continue to do, though, is draw these, the opportunity for extra, um, abstract shapes. Sorry, I got lost there for a second. Now, you know, in saying, oh, the, the cotton skirt and the folds and great artists and blah, 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 the, the wallpaper that I built in the background doesn't even come close to matching the wallpaper here. This has got itty-bitty little patterns. It reminds me of something that was in my parents' parlor uh, when I was a kid. And when my, it was actually the same wallpaper that was in the parlor when my dad was a kid. So it was... Um, like a hundred years old and still hanging up because my dad didn't want anything to change. And it's, it's very charming wallpaper. It's just tiny little patterns and I'm not interested in tiny little patterns. I like big. I had, a, I had a woman say to me once, honey, go big or go home. And that stuck with me. So I love 
I loved getting the permission to do things big. So, that is what I'm doing. I'm going to prop this up a little bit. As you can see in the background, I've got my Franz Klein, I still have my Franz Klein swipes showing through, black stripes, swipes. And I love the swipes. I can either adhere to them or not. And it don't matter. Don't matter none. It matters if it stands up. Um, I always work them into the painting, but accentuating them isn't necessary. It's, you know, just because it's there doesn't mean that I have to, you know, recognize it. Just because the phone rings doesn't mean you have to answer it. So, what I'm going to do, what I'm trying to figure out is, not only, what am I going to do, I'm sorry. What I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is what I'm going to do, not only do in between the stenciling, because I thought I figured it out, but I'm not really sure, but also what am I going to do on the stenciling. I don't like to leave the stencil flat. I know that, you know, as a stencil artist, you're supposed to or something. There's some dumb rule. But I don't put, I don't put it down there so that I can leave a flat, uninteresting surface behind. I put them down for suggestions as an option, not as the rule. Oh, we hate rules. Oh my god. What is the I keep saying in all the videos, what is what is the one of the rules of painting? Oh crap, I can't even get it out. One of the rules of painting is there are no rules. So I'm not sticking to this rule, that's for sure. So again, I'm not sure if I want to go in between, if I want to go on, well I know I want to go in between, but do I want to go on, build another layer. And I probably will, although it's going to fill it out, and I don't like to have, you know, everything, you know, filled with paint every inch of it. It's okay, because that's what that is for, just in case you change your mind. I'm also trying out different colors. I've tried out, I've been trying out teal. I've been trying out gre more greener teal. This actually might be it. Yep, that's going to be it. So I'm going to end up covering the green shapes with teals and going between them so that it's even. I know in the reference material this is a bit shadowed, but I don't care. That, that much of a rebel. Let's see if we can even that out for you. shades of blue, different shades of teal. There are no rules. It does not need to be perfect. It does, however, need to be interesting. I think maybe I'm going to turn this right side up. Now, the thing, I'm not married to this idea where I have to have, you know, the teals and blues. I mean, well, I do want, I know I want teals and blues. That's something I planned on a long time ago. But I'm not married to the idea that it's even going to stay this. That, that again, that's what the rag is for. That's what mineral spirits are for. So when you change your mind, I think I went too dark in there. 
But now, what I was working on earlier, oops, what I was working on earlier was the, um, the fireplace, pulling the darks into the fireplace, pulling the darks into this chest, pulling lights out into the, pl uh, the planter. And I'm, I've got a plant in there with the suggestion of leaves, but I'm not going to fill them in. I just don't really want to. I don't think it's interesting. Sure too. Now I've got the light over here. This is um, paper in the fireplace, which I again I'm just going to leave it abstract shapes at least for now. What I may do is put the creases in to match, not to match, but to follow the skirt. But one thing I do want to make sure I do is, along with the dark, is have the light in there reflected in somewhere in the skirt. Again, it doesn't have to be all solid paint right now, but they do have to feel like they belong in the same painting. You know, I've been trying to figure out the past few years what it is about these old photographs. Why do I want to paint them? When I was in, um, I went to the Boston Museum School for about a year and a half, two years. It was a horrible experience. I didn't fit in. You know, I wasn't wild enough or trendy enough or, you know, didn't dress like a unicorn to go to school or, you know, just didn't want to roller skates on the bus. I dress like me. I've always been in Levi's in a blue sweatshirt. <laughs> been this way since fourth grade and it's not changing. So I didn't fit in really well. And where was I going? Oh, I remember. So we had a teacher who said, you have to start thinking about what your work is going to be about. What what is what is going to be the driving force behind your work? You know, everyone's got a clear idea of what the, their life theme is going to be. Well, who at 18, 19 years old has a clue what their life theme is going to be? Most of us don't know. So I thought it was a kind of a nutty question. But it's something, too, that I've asked myself about a billion times since then. And I can't, I mean, all, all of, the one thing that I've really enjoyed painting, although I can paint almost anything, the one thing I've always enjoyed painting is black and white photographs. I love old photographs of people. I love, I love them. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. I love them. I just, I love looking at people together and watching people have fun and, um, you know, just someone's there. It's not just a picture of them taking a photograph, but that someone was interested enough in that person to take their photograph. So the photograph isn't about one person, it's about two people, it's about a relationship, and I just find it really interesting. I look at my old family photographs and I, you know, I, I try and I think of the story or the time that they were and then try and relate it to other photographs like, you know, what's the story behind this one? Not that I'm going to write a whole story about her, but it's just kind of interesting to me. What was the relationship between this little girl and the photographer? And so what should the relationship between her and I be? What should the relationship between her and the other viewer be? And how should she be treated? How, how should I be treating her? How should I be depicting her? How should I be feeling about her? 
Any photograph I take, I have to have a, a feeling for, I have to have a connection. It's not just a depiction of that photograph, but there has to be an emotional connection. And I'm not really sure why it's the photographs. It could be because I don't have a lot of close relationships. I don't hang out. I have pals. But I don't have the personality that people want to be with day after day or call up and say, would you like to go out for dinner? Plus, I really don't like going out. I don't, you know, I just, ugh, ugh, ugh. So I don't have that kind of personality, but it interests me that people do. It, 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 it annoys me when people waste time like that, but it's also, it's kind of interesting for me to watch. I love going to parades and watching people have fun. And it's kind of the same thing. I mean, we didn't have that kind of a family growing up where, you know, we were close-knit. So I love seeing people enjoy themselves, and I love imagining the relationship between this person and the photographer, and developing a relationship between this person and the viewer, and trying to find emotional content so that there is a relationship built and a good relationship built. And then we want the abstract shapes and the interest and blah, 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 blah. I think I'm always talking about. So, although I was asked that question, oh, oh, I was first asked that question, what is your life's work going to be about? Oh, almost 32 years ago, which is really hard to believe a question that's never left me. And so when I see other people's work, I think, what is your work about? What is your intent? What is your drive? Is it just to paint pretty pictures of, you know, whatever's in front of you, just to do that great depiction? Or is there an emotional content? content? Is there an emotional understanding? A lot of my work is based on emotion and, and energy. Some of it negative, lately positive. All right, and I'm going to get this thing a little bit further along before I have to hop on the bus. Take the two hour ride home. I better get to work. Ciao.